Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to watch Silicon Valley Season 1, Episode 8 to see how accurate all the science and technology in this TV show really are. I would like to propose that we uh, put this incident behind us, legally speaking, uh, by sending Pied Piper directly through to the finals of Startup Battlefield, where you will compete for the grand prize. That is a pretty big deal and a decent scandal. If engineers are anything, we are very, very competitive. One of the things that we have to do when getting our bachelor's degree is we take a design class. I think it's called capstone in most places. And that is basically a contest. I mean, I don't know if it's meant to be or not, but each team is, is comprised of like one electrical engineer, one mechanical engineer, and a computer science guy. And then you all work on a design project that's assigned to you by your professors and judges. And then you compete to see who created the best design or who represented their project in the most efficient way. For a startup competition like this, there are plenty. The one that comes to mind is MIT 100K, which as you probably guessed, the top prize will get $100,000 towards their startup. And there's also there's a bunch of these things in Silicon Valley. They're, there's um, Startup World Cup, and then they have like so many little ones that are like company specific, and they're gonna have other competitions that are like, um, like the Google Science Fair, and they have um, other challenges for people to solve. Whereas this one is more like just a overall startup or like a pitch competition. You're attracting a lot of attention from a lot of large tech companies because even if you don't win first prize, the exposure that you get from showing off your product or your app or you know whatever your startup is comprised of like it, it's pretty valuable to see like all these large companies watching this and just like it is on shark tank you want to present your stuff in such a way but even if you don't make a deal and even if you don't win first prize there are so many people in the tech world watching you that like you still have the chance to sell whatever you're making for a very very high price to like potentially like IBM or Apple or Amazon, like one of these large tech companies. He can't come close to our Weissman score. Even with all this extra shit, it's like a fancy car with a crappy engine. Our Weissman score is the best in the history of compression. This uh, Weissman score is not real, like in, in the actual world of engineering. When I say it's not real, I don't mean that it doesn't exist. Like it was th this, um, there's an equation that you actually use to determine a Weissman score and that formula was made by a professor at Stanford University whose last name is Weissman. So it's not that like it, like it exists, but it's not a metric that engineers actually use to like measure compression. The Weissman score measures compression ratio versus compression speed, which is another way of saying like how fast can you take a whole lot of data and shrink it into a little bit so that you can like easily transport it and move it wherever you want to? Like for example, Netflix and any like these movie streaming services, they will use these compression algorithms so that they can take a very large like movie, shrink it down, and then that's far easier to use and manipulate because now like think about it like this. You don't want to have to download like all these like HD movies and TV shows onto your like TV or your computer when you're actually watching them. So that's why you have a compressed file. Um, the file that you're watching it from is not as large as the original file itself. That's why Netflix has such a lar large library of movies and TV shows. But there's a limit, which is why they have to constantly like remove movies and add new ones on. But if you're able to have a much more efficient compression algorithm, you can compress all of your individual files much smaller. That way you have room for more information, more movies, and more TV shows. They just completely reverse engineered our entire compression engine. He totally sniped us. We'll be fine. What? They, they, they didn't actually reverse engineer Pad Piper. They pretty much just like built off because remember like in the first episode Richard or I don't know if it was the first episode but earlier in the season Richard actually emailed like other programmers like what he was working on so his whole algorithm or like up to that point he shared his work with some other engineers and programmers so they didn't like reverse engineer what he'd been working on they just built upon what he already had and they expanded on it further than he ever did. Reverse engineering something is really, really difficult. Like far more than people actually think it is. It's 
Like, so for example, let's say like I came to you and I said, okay, here's a bottle of Windex. Without knowing the ingredients or how much of each chemical is in there, tell me what it's made of. <laughs> That's not easy. Like, you're looking at like this bottle of like blue liquid. For all you know, that it just, they just dyed it blue. It could be like some other color entirely. And now you have to figure out what chemicals are in Windex and you have to determine the concentration of each of these and also the order of which you mix them in matters. So reverse engineering is really, really tough. What we're trying to do, hypothetically, is minimize time, which is 800 dudes multiplied by mean jerk time divided by four dicks at a time. Of course, Erlich would have to pre-sort guys by height so that their dicks lined up. Not by height, technically. This is a really fascinating conversation. I mean, so who can't say that they've done this before presenting their startup in front of a thousand people? That equation, by the way, is correct. Like the T is equal to 800 times MJT over four, which is like MJT's mean jerk time. So I mean, you can just simplify that to T is equal to 200 times MJT. They don't know what the mean jerk time is yet. So actually, you know what? You can calculate mean jerk time because it's gonna be, like he said, they have 10 minutes to uh, give their presentation. And so it, it would be 10 is equal to 200 times MJT. So then the mean jerk time is going to be 1 over 20, which is 0 0.05 minutes, which is th 3 seconds. Yeah, yes. Okay, so that means mean jerk time is 3 seconds. So for Ehrlich Bachman to jerk off the entire audience in 10 minutes going four guys at once, he would have to jerk them all off three like within three seconds so it'd be three seconds and then you get another four guys and then you just continue that process until the 10 minutes is over are we assuming though that everyone in that audience is a male they're going over some very important variables here like you have to also like the the dick to floor is like a very important height and like the to go at the angle like they're actually looking at this from a very scientific perspective and these are all important variables like not not to mention, like, you also have to keep in mind, like, not, not so much the time, because, like, it has to all be done within 10 minutes, but, like, does that guy have the stamina to do... Okay, I... When I woke up this morning, I would never have guessed that this is how I was going to spend my day, but, like, that equation, like, the time is equal to 200 times, like, MJT, it, like... That's correct. That makes sense. Like if you want to determine like how to, how to jerk off the entire audience given a certain amount of time, that that's the way to do it. Oh, hello. Hello. Um, I am. My name is Richard Hendricks, uh, and uh, I am along with uh, uh, this guy, him, him. And okay. Well, first of all, the audience is not all men. There, we, we we just saw what's her name in there, but that's besides that. I like his. His acting is really good here because this is making me feel weird. And like this pitch is just awful. Like you can tell that he is really not confident. He is not well prepared. And I j just from right here, like the the amount of time that you have like during these um, pitch competitions is very very limited. I mean, granted he's in the finals, but for like the MIT 100K round one, you have 90 seconds to get get your idea out there and I, like you get more time as the rounds progress but he's already blown like in, in this first impression and like just ah oh, this is just so bad man a lot of engineers do not do well with public speaking and the primary reason for that is because we never have to most of the time when people are communicating like with with, with us for any sort of like technical matter it's almost always like in a meeting where we can't see anybody else and we have like headphones on it's like over Skype and that's a lot easier than physically seeing people sitting right in front of you and having to address all of them at once. I'm sorry to interrupt your eloquent presentation Richard but rather than say anything more why don't we just give you a file and we'll see whether this thing can do what you say it does because if it can't then we're done here right? Yeah yeah that's fair. That judge is an asshole. You would never ever see that happen in an actual competition or like during any sort of event like this because 
part of the presentation of your app or your website or your program or like whatever it is that you're presenting, like one of the big aspects of it is a demonstration. So you, you like as a judge too, like you don't have to interrupt this guy, like even though his presentation and like his public speaking is pretty awful, right? That's a really disrespectful thing to do to like cut somebody off like mid thought and especially like he's seen so many of these before already like you don't have to interrupt a presenter to say hey stop what you're doing and then just show me if it works or not like they're going they're going to show you I and mean, that's like that was just a really really dick move on his part i also don't know why the judges aren't facing like the contestants like why is it they have to like turn their back to see the screen for the actual demonstration and why are like, why are they facing the audience? Shouldn't they be facing the engineers and, like, the people who are presenting the startup? Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want me to see more Silicon Valley, just go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. And as always, you guys, stay fresh and stay golden.